guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell based on the title, well, I want to talk about this particular style that I've been seeing. I don't want to say it's a major trend or anything like that. It, this is a style that has existed for a very long time. I feel like I've been seeing it more so recently. We saw hints of this this past fashion month and we saw a lot of things happen this past fashion month. We saw boho, Western, office core, furry mob wife coats, the Margiela show. I guess that was Couture Week, but we saw various approaches to fashion, but I noticed the stylistic approach from some of the brands that I like to follow, including the Row and Celine. By the way, I did do deeper dives into those collections, so I'll link those videos down below. But even just brands I haven't ever really followed, like Altuzara, and I also think at Carbon, since Louise Trotter has become the creative director, we've seen traces of this there too. And what I'm talking about is this concept of dressing like a swan or swan style. There have been a couple articles that have discussed this as it relates to what we've been seeing on the runways and film and culture. So I thought we'd talk about it here. And I guess why it really resonates with me is because while I feel I've never really considered this as a way of dressing, the more I actually look at my closet, I'm like, I have a lot of items that fit into this category or can be styled in such a way where it goes into this category. So I guess that's why I'm more so drawn to it. And then say like the Western style. I saw recently there was an article called Grown Up Discerning Glamorous 2024 Will Be the Year of the Swan. They state this, quote, after examining the runways as well as the current state of style, one of the biggest movements we are observing in fashion is the shift to a new era of elegance. After the fall 2024 collections were presented, this renewed sense of sophistication comes on the heels of oversized suiting, baggy low rise jeans, an overall sense of casual fashion that has dominated. Style has now swung in the opposite side of the pendulum. Now refined glamour has returned with modern day swans on the runways through contemporary interpretations of 1950s and 1960s style as encapsulated by elegant socialites like CZ Guest, Babe Paley, and celebrities who dressed in timeless looks such as Grace Kelly and Audrey Hepburn. I do think it's a little bit of a reach to say 2024 is gonna be the year of the swan. I think there's a lot of different styles going on, but I have noticed that for instance, when I was looking at the recent collection from the row, how the row the past couple seasons were going for the very casual, carefree, effortless, sporty jackets and things like that. To this collection, it was very 1950s. And even at Celine, the muse wasn't like a modern day Jane Birkin. It was very much an Audrey Hepburn. And I really do think the style of Jane Birkin, the attitude of how Jane Birkin dressed has really exploded in fashion recently. Even just when we think about handbags, not just owning the Birkin, but the way she actually wore the Birkin and how brands like Balenciaga and Miu Miu, there's that sort of Jane Birkin way of styling their bags. I definitely still think that is there. I think Chloe was a show that was very well received. So that boho spirit still is there. There absolutely is that yearning for that in fashion and obviously the Louis Vuitton by Pharrell show. But I think it's always so fascinating how when fashion goes one direction, it's almost like people want it to go in the other direction. It's no longer Jane Birkin. Maybe it's now going in the direction of Grace Kelly. And while I'm not like a boho Jane or elegant Grace Kelly, I would say I do personally resonate more with Jane Birkin style, but I think also as I get older, I'm kind of seeing the stylistic ways at which Grace Kelly and how my immigrant Asian mother wanted me to always dress. But anyways, I will say, especially the way that brands like The Row and Carvin, even Altuzara this past season have made me want to embrace aspects of this way of dressing. I actually have already several pieces in my closet. Another great article was from the Washington Post from Rachel Tassian titled, Ladies Who Lunch Have Become 2024's Unexpected Fashion Icons. From Maestro to Capote versus the Swans, the lust for glamour in the 1950s and 60s have moved to fashion and style. The article goes on to talk about several films. She talks to costume designer Mark Bridges and he talks about how this woman, she is always pulled together, well tailored. Every pair of shoes has been dyed to match each of her ensembles, quote, that's how she lived. And Rachel Tassian talks to Mark Bridges about how he would mix actual vintage pieces, such as the Adolfo jacket with items designed by him, like caped gowns. Their clothing is armor to them. In addition to that, I couldn't possibly get any bad news if I looked like a million bucks. And I think this concept of like the swan style, when we think about kind of the elegance and grace associated with swans, these adaptations and these recent 
collections references mid-century women, but the way they're being presented on the runway, they aren't limited to this idea of a 1950s housewife or like a Betty Draper, that kind of image. Definitely she could be a wife, she could be a mother like many women were, but I think this style looks at the elegance that the women of this period possessed. It's not that 90s effortless elegance of Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, quote unquote effortless. She has worked in the fashion industry, she lives and breathes fashion, that kind of 90s effortless model off duty that these women possessed because they worked in fashion. It's not so much that. The attitude of this is very coordinated, tailored, poised. Maybe some people might say too matchy matchy, right? To have your shoes match your dress and the bag be a part of the ensemble. That's how people used to dress. And that was in many ways the ideal for many women back in the day. Just like this imagery of a swan, this flowing, graceful clothing kind of almost like evokes the plumage of a swan. That is like the look, right? Think like soft, fluid lines, silks, feathers, very delicate embellishments to capture this ethereal quality of a swan. And I think a lot of people would describe it as old fashioned. I know there's probably gonna be someone in the comments that's gonna be like granny or something in a very like ageist way, but this ladylike quality borrowing almost from your grandmother's, depending on, you know, your age. For me, it would be like my grandmother's, the silent generation, right? For me as a millennial. Such a far time from 2024. When I see brands like Carbon, Altuzara, The Row, they're not just ripping off of these 1950s and 60s looks. It's more like an honorific way of looking at how these women dressed rather than trying to be alternative or like edgy. You're just looking at certain ideals. There's definite inspiration. And what I really like about this style is I think it can be very minimal. Like I have seen a lot of people that lean in a more quiet, luxury aesthetic embrace this like Jennifer Lawrence there was another article talking about her embracing the style recently but I definitely think you can go very maximal really luxe fur coats really very luxurious watches jewelry I think things like exotic animal print animal fur goes really well with this look but I also think of course you know brands like the row have done this really well too this last collection some of these looks have been some of my favorite looks from the row but even if I look back to some of their pre previous collections, we see definite hints of this style of dressing, taking a bit of Jackie Kennedy in some of their collections, making it more the row. And if you really admire Carolyn Bissett Kennedy's style, she always had this sort of classic elegance, that kind of like grace about her. She would wear brands like Yoji Yamamoto, but she would wear it in a way that was very appropriate for her. Her mother-in-law was a huge icon in American fashion, as well as Lee Radswell, her sister. And as I looked at my own collection, I was noticing I have a lot of what these articles are saying, dressing like a swan in my collection. And you probably do as well. You may not really think of it because it hasn't been the way at which we would style these pieces. So I thought we'd take a look at these five pieces that I have, as well as five others to consider. Since we love handbags on this channel, I really love my Celine class bag. It is one of my tried and true kind of trusted bags. It's old Celine era, but kind of that like top handle lady like vibe. I also have the Row Sophia also very much this. Some bags from the Row actually I think are more like casual Birkin energy like the Margot, but I think the Sophia, this is more in that direction as well as the Celine 16. Any of these top handle bags or anything that that is like a clutch. The Row does a lot of these sorts of clutch style bags. Of course, other bags that I think fit into this category, bags to consider. I love the Jill Sander Goji bag. A lot of the ladies I see on Instagram that have this bag, they very much embody this modern day like swan style. Similar to that, the Gucci bamboo top handle or even the Gucci Jackie, of course. But yes, definitely consider clutches, things with top handles, that kind of ladies who lunch vibe. So the next item that I have already in my closet that have several of our gloves. We've been seeing this on the row, Carvin. It's less of like a very sleek, tight look. It's more relaxed and even scrunched in a way. That's personally an accessory I've already bought into. Other things to consider actually are brooches. It's not the CC logo. It's not that kind of look that we saw maybe in the later 2010s. The brooches are more scaparelli. It's something that kind of is organic, hammered quality 
to it. You could use a brooch in a way to like, hold a scarf together or like drape your scarf over you. But Carvin had the most stunning dresses with these brooch combinations or these metal detailings. The way the brooches or these metal accents are holding the gathered fabric pieces together. I think it's a really nice touch and of course you can thrift this. The next point I want to talk about, I'm just going to say lower lady heels, kitten heels, sling backs, literally shoes that have been around since your grandma has been around. I was looking in my closet, I have these Chanel sling backs which I always like to pull out every now and then but I feel the way you would wear this in the past, you'd wear these sling backs with skinny jeans, like a Balmain blazer, like a boy bag or something like that but instead of like a tighter silhouette, you're seeing wider, more loose, more like kind of 1950s voluminous silhouettes and why I like Carvin is they would kind of like top it with something a little bit more sartorial but again back to this point about those classic ranges of shoes, think Roger Vivier, how Jackie Kennedy would wear Roger Vivier or think about like very classic looking Manolo Blahnik and I feel like we've been seeing these kinds of Manolo Blahnik shoes be in style for some time and of course Prada and Mimi have been doing really ultra cool kitten heels for the fit for me personally I always love Manolo Blahnik shoes on my feet another style I personally absolutely love are these Sid shoes they also come in a boot style from the row it's definitely a statement with that point but another style that the row have been doing are more so these almond shoes these are shoes my grandma legitimately had. I remember going into my grandma's closet trying on shoes like this. There's kind of like this like modernized vintage vibe that I think the Row and Miu Miu and Prada do really well but then there's also things that look like this that literally look like they're out of your grandma's closet. This is something you could easily thrift or you know if you've always wanted to invest in one of these classic brands. They've been around for a very long time and they do have a following of people that constantly buy them for a good reason. Okay so the next piece is actually the piece that I'm wearing and I'm talking about this Hermes scarf. While I have a few Hermes scarves, I have only really recently realized how I like to wear it. I kind of just like to wear it like this, but I feel like I want my clothes to look very contemporary in a way. These scarves can to me verge on flight attendant looks if you go very prim and proper. And this is something you probably already have in your closet or you can borrow from your mom, your grandma, your aunt. You don't need to go to Hermes to buy this. But I think the way that I have been seeing it more so on social media is you're actually wearing it like it's, you know, a headpiece. Recently we've seen Kendall Jenner and Jennifer Lawrence kind of pull that off and I've just been seeing it more so on social media and it makes me think of women in those old movies where they have sunglasses, the headscarf and they're like in a convertible. Very glamorous. And an even further extreme in this kind of direction are these pillbox hats. I think this might look really terrible on me and so I don't know if it would work, but I really love how I've seen this styled. It's very Jackie Kennedy, it's very Audrey Hepburn. I know The Row has done this in the past as well as Altuzara. Even Olaya have done this as well. Again, you can probably pick this up at like a vintage store or check eBay or something. But another style of hat that I've been seeing that kind of fits into the silk silhouette but it's not worn the same way it's like a very 2024 way of wearing these and I'm talking about bucket hats even though bucket hats did have like a viral moment maybe I don't know five years ago or something like that I always think Dior and Prada really did the bucket hats but to me this is done in a more like minimal way like the row has these really unusual bucket hats that kind of have this see-through element to it and then Phoebe Philo has these leather bucket hats super unexpected and honestly when it came to like clothing a lot of what we're seeing are kind of these gathered textile pieces and the way that they're worn in particular carbon but I would say also the row as well you want to layer these pieces almost in like a modernized way and you want to add like sheerness to them but yeah just think of those materials like silk satin chiffon materials like that but again really like how carbon did this there was sort of this tension between this delicate 1950s femininity with these touches of of something that felt more modern. I would say quote unquote masculine, more structured tailored coats. The way she did colors was so beautiful to me. Like very soft, delicate colors. I was just looking in my wardrobe. One of my favorite pieces that I bring every spring summer is this Max Mar. It's like this satin skirt. Kind of has this like hammered look to it, which I actually like because I find with a lot of the slip skirts, they can be a little bit too revealing, if you know what I mean. Another piece that I have, I wouldn't really even think this is what I would typically consider 
year, but it's this Vivian Westwood gather drapey kind of quality. This kind of sheen that these fabrics give. And of course, just anything very classic heritage mid-century of these very iconic houses, very classic Chanel, very classic Dior, even like the Dior bar jackets. The row had these single button coats. I feel like have been trending recently. Things that you could probably like thrift, but you really want to find those mid-century pieces. And the problem is with like a lot of these pieces, they may not be in really good condition. There's that. And of course, as I've mentioned, leopard print exotics. It's like very Jackie Kennedy, as well as Carolyn Bissett Kennedy. So yes, in conclusion, I don't think this is necessarily about replicating or just straight up copying 1950s or 60s fashion. It's almost like looking at this period in more of an honorific way, but also being able to modernize it. You're not supposed to literally look like Betty Draper. She's got places to go, people to see, affairs to tend to. That's kind of the inspiration. She is still likely a mother, a wife, but this woman is a woman that can do more and wants to do more. And I also think this is an older woman, and at least the way that a lot of these women are portrayed in these films. She's hosting events, she's building the profile of her husband, she's engaging in philanthropic endeavors. An example of this we see today is Dita Blair. I've talked about her in previous videos from The Row. She's kind of like the perfect embodiment of the style, who is a socialite, who is very much involved in philanthropic endeavors. At this age, they've lived such interesting lives. They're such interesting women that have such interesting stories to tell. And it was very interesting how in my video on The Row, I talked about the 50s influences, I got responses about how the 1950s was a regressive era for women, and it definitely was. But I also think there are things about that period that I also admire that I feel like are definitely lost with today. First of all, things were just really great quality and craftsmanship. The attitude that a lot of these women had back in the day was they really had higher standards, how you presented yourself to the world, said a lot about who you were. And I still think, you could probably still argue this today, while I think a lot of people in this space might be a little bit more concerned about how they dressed, I think just in the general public, like when I dropped my son off to preschool, women just look like super casual. They might have like a never full on and that's like their indulgence, right? That really nice handbag, but they'll be wearing like Lululemon or something. A lot of women back in the day, there was sort of a pride in the effort that you put, the work that you put in to your home, your clothing, your decor, your dinner table. It wasn't just to make things aesthetic and good for social media. The attitude and like the importance of presentation, showing that there was effort. It was very interesting recently in my video where I did an unboxing of the shoulder Birkin, I was contemplating on whether I should keep that or get the Phoebe Philo drive bag, which is just the newer iteration of this old Celine bag. And I got a comment where it was that bag is just too try hard or something. The Birkin that's more kind of that effortless, relaxed kind of vibe. Just made me think, you know, I actually don't mind that it looks like I tried actually. While I think overall I like that, I can wear things in a very casual whatever kind of way. And I'm really grateful for that. While there are no rigid rules as to how they were back in the day, I actually think that is a good thing, right? When I go out and like take my son to preschool, I will also say there is something in me just maybe it's just because of like the pandemic and just this very casual direction in fashion. It's nice to feel like it's okay to dress in this way. Like it's okay to put effort into your outfit. These women, they made it aspirational to try and presentation was important. And how you wanted to communicate yourself to the world was kind of all you had. It's great that we live in a society where that isn't the end all be all, but it's also okay if people want to do that as well. So yes, that is my video. Thank you so much for joining me in another one and I hope to see you in the next one.